Raw opened with the Judgment Day in the ring. Priest, Finn, Rhea. They had a big speech, video of Dom winning the North American title. They called him out. My God, this guy got heat. These people hated this bro or enjoyed hating him. And then uh, he's out there. They got another video package. He declares he's a North American champion. Kevin and Sammy interrupt. They've been through this before. They don't like Dom. Dom says, I'm the champion. Sammy says, well, listen, these fans don't respect you, but they might respect you if you wrestle me tonight. Dom says, you're on. And then Sammy says, you know, last week we were going to wrestle you guys and you demanded we put the tag team titles on the line, and we did. So I think it's only fair that tonight you put the North American title on the line. And Dom is not down with this, but Rhea grabs the mic and says he accepts. Dom was not happy about that. Then we had Becky and Zoe Stark. The stipulation is if Becky wins, she gets a match with Trish. If she loses, she must get Thank You Trish tattooed on her chest. So they had a good match. And Trish headbutted her with the face mask for the heat. Then she threw the mask in for distraction. But uh, eventually, Zoe tried to springboard. Becky caught her in midair, manhandled, slam, pinned her. So no tattoo for Becky Lynch. Huge pop at the finish. Becky is getting her match with Trish. You know, in another era, mainly the Attitude Era, Zoe Stark would have won. And then we would have had long segments about what counted as part of the chess. Did it have to be, like, right in front? You know, could Becky try to get out of it by doing under boob? That's what would have happened back in the day. Not all that Attitude Era stuff was good. Then we had Cody coming out. He's very ginger with his arm. I don't know if that's a word, but he was, he was holding it gingerly. Gingerly, yes. Ever thought about how weird that is? So anyway, he doesn't have a cast, but it's it's not 100%. And he says, you know, I, I'm not surprised by what you did last week. I'm quite impressed. But someone who was not impressed was my mother, Michelle Runnels. She was there when Terry Funk threw fireballs at my father. She used to drink with Gordon Soley at the Columbia. <laughs> and she'd tell me what I'm telling you. You made a big mistake. You left me breathing. He vows to end all of this at SummerSlam. Drinking with Gordon Soli, which probably wasn't too hard since Gordon Soli was drinking pretty much all the time. I had a Rick Shea promo challenging old Logan. And then we had Sammy and Dirty Dom for the North American title. Man, they had a really good match. Sammy Zayn was great. Dom did a great job. They did a spot where Rhea took the ref and Priest shoved Sammy off the top for the heat. And Kevin jumps up on the apron. And the referee says, I saw you on the apron. He ejects him for being on the apron. Which People are on the apron all the time. So, of course, the fans boo. But then the ref goes, Rhea Priest, you're out of here as well. And he gets rid of him. Stressed ref. So it's one-on-one. The announcer started plugging X. I can't even say it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dom hits the three amigos, goes for the frog splash, knees up. Sammy hits the exploder. He's going for the boot, but Rhea and Priest are shown beating up Kevin in the uh, rampway. And, of course, Sammy's distracted, rolled up, and pinned by Dom. This was a horrible finish to a very good match. And, in fact, that happened two in a row. Now, listen. I know they do these stupid finishes sometime. I've seen these finishes. I've seen these exact same finishes on, on AEW. I, I, I don't inherently hate them. It's okay to do it every now and then. Don't do it two matches in a row. That's what the agents are for. But, Brian, that's God. what they do. That's what they do. Brian, no, that's what it's they not do. what they do because it's stuck out here because they don't always do it two in a row, and they did here. It was irritating. Lazy. So we had uh, Bronson Reed and Ciampa. It was the same thing. This match, this was a great match. And it started out with a crowd that was like, nah, it's Bronson and Ciampa. Yeah, it's fine, whatever. But these guys were like, they beat the crap out of each other. And they're doing all sorts of things that you don't see. Like Bronson did a, like, it wasn't quite a rainmaker, but it was like he was going for a short arm clothesline, but then he turned it into a power slam. That was awesome, like a fast power slam. And then there was an air raid crash off the middle rope, and 
Uh, Yokozuna's sit-down splash after Ciampa tried the fairy tale ending. So the crowd's going nuts for this by the end because they're just working their buttocks off. And then uh, Nakamura walked to ringside. Ciampa's distracted. At least this time, Bronson hit him with a move off the apron and threw him in and hit his finish and pinned him. But still, I didn't need two in a row. You could have done this later on in the show, and I actually probably wouldn't be fine with it. Very disappointing with Ciampa, but you know what? At this point in his career, you know, you don't expect a lot out of pushing him. But Bronson Reed, I, I do worry about because of his height. And it's like he can do so many unique things that I don't ever need him to be the world heavyweight champion. They shouldn't look at him that way. But because he's so unique and can work with different guys and do such different things compared to a lot of other people there, like that's why you have a mid card and an upper, upper mid card. So you can, he can be that guy in the mid card. He can hold the secondary titles and every once in a while you can pull him up if you need to. I do. And again, I just, I know the triple H sees something in him. I don't know if everybody else does. Well, right now, the guy that needs to see something with is Triple H. And you know what I want to see? What do you want to see? I don't mind Ciampa losing. Because I want him to lose and lose and lose. And then Johnny Gargano returns and DIY. He turns on Johnny Gargano. Now DIY reunites and we get some awesome tag matches. Liv did a promo. I saw this coming three weeks ago when she was backstage and Rhea showed up. And Rhea is the baddest woman in all of wrestling and she's standing there like just looking like whatever and live all smiling and Abby goes we are I don't know if you get it or not we're not scared of you and I thought you're dead and then she did the same thing last week and she tried again here and uh Rhea gave her a warning so they were gonna have a match Rhea jumped her and she destroyed her and she absolutely destroyed her to death, and she pilmanized her shoulder twice. Somebody on the uh, board was like, I watch horror movies, and people get lit on fire and don't sell like this. Well, she's out, and maybe for a long, long time. Didn't you see her get killed by Chucky? She, she loves moments like this. Well, she was absolutely killed, and this will lead to uh, Rhea Ripley and Raquel Rodriguez at SummerSlam. No, 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 no. For the title. No, it may be. Raquel Rodriguez challenging Lyra Valkyria. No. You should have seen the digital promo, Brian. Oh, I heard it. It would have gotten you all fired up to getting ready for that. I'm sure they'll show it tonight. Oh, my God. I can't wait. The range of Lyra Valkyria is amazing. Alpha Academy did a promo. So they had a Viking Rules match last week, which was like a really fun match. It actually turned into a great match by the end, but the Alpha Academy lost. And so this week. They have now challenged the Viking Raiders to an Alpha Academy rules match. I hope I can contain my excitement for this. And then, then, Maxine steps into frame, and she challenged Valhalla to a one-on-one match. Give it to me. Give me all of it. Please. Please, yes. It's happening next week. Thank you. Yes, it is. Ricochet comes out, calls Logan down to the ring. Brawl rolls on. Uh, this Ricochet, he's actually doing, for a guy that they never let talk, he's actually doing pretty decent promos. But, I, you know, the problem is, you know, you can do a decent promo, but, like, you can't be completely, totally full of it. And what he's trying to say is, we wrestlers were on the road all the time. We trained. You know, some of us went through the indies. We, like, you know, did the grind, and you just walk in off of YouTube, and you're getting main events. So he's angry about that. But he actually goes, "We've missed time. We've missed months. We've had months away from our families. I'm like months away from your families. What are you talking about? Yeah, Who in the world has months away from their families because of this business? Nobody, especially in 2023. So you forget the COVID time. I mean, a lot of people had to spend a lot more time with their families and not do as much. Come on. There were people that couldn't wait to get back on the road. <laughs> but anyway, Logan flew in out of nowhere, jumped in from behind, got on his phone, accepted the match. But then Rick Shea made a comeback, super kicked him, standing shooting star press, gave a hello to Logan's followers. I checked his uh, his social media last night. I didn't see this video, but maybe maybe he forgot to hit record. You ever done that? <laughs> God. Yes. I saw Bigfoot the other day. Shayna Baszler had the promo. I'm going to fight Ronda Rousey. And then Logan does a promo backstage. And he's interviewed by Byron. And, you know, 
Byron goes, you know, what happened out there? And Logan goes, that was unprofessional as hell what happened out there. I was victimized. But none of that matters. I'm coming for Ricochet next week. And I'm going to pop him in his stupid bald head. And then he looks at Byron and he goes, no offense. And he pats him on the head and leaves. He was so <laughs> polite. Felt was so that bad. Because, was that because Byron was bald or because yeah. he's stupid? He was bald. Well, I mean, it might have been a lot of things. Uh, Damian Priest squashed Apollo Crews two minutes south of heaven. Becky Lynch so, promo. I guess Apollo's uh, third eye didn't see that one coming. Yeah, he didn't see it coming. Well, maybe he did, but he was all right with it. Valhalla accepts Maxine's challenge. We had a Gunther and Drew McIntyre face to face, and uh, it was a good face to face. I thought Gunther was good. Drew was good. You know, Gunther is a fighting champion. He goes, you want to ride my coattails? I accept. I will humiliate you at SummerSlam. I humiliated you at Mania. And Drew says, well, you know, it was a three-way at Mania. Sheamus and I were so intent on beating each other up that you snuck in and won. So good for you. You deserved it. But it is a one-on-one -on -one match at SummerSlam, and I'm going to beat your butt. And then Ludwig Kaiser steps up. How dare you speak to the ring general like that, Drew says. I like you. You should be you a leader. You have a voice to actually do what he did. I can't. William. And uh, So anyway, this leads to Drew versus Kaiser, and they had a really good match. And the highlight of this match actually was Corey Graves doing a Ludwig Kaiser impersonation. <laughs> this guy was so unbelievably good that, like, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Because I didn't hear him start. Like, I was kind of zoned out a little bit because I don't listen to the commentators much. And all of a sudden, I'm watching Kaiser, and I'm also hearing him. And I'm like, is he wrestling in a headset? What's going on? It was Corey. He did a great, incredible job. <laughs> and then Kaiser avoided the Claymore, hit a kick, but then hit the ropes, ate a Claymore, got pinned. And then they beat the heck out of Drew afterwards. Poor Riddle ran down. This poor bloke, he got killed. And they laid him out. But then Drew fought back and powerbombed Gunther through a table. Gunther landed right on his head, thought he was dead. But he appears to be okay. But uh, good segment. That match is going to be awesome. That might be the best match on SummerSlam. And it will be unless Roman and Jay just have like some incredible match. And then we have the contract signing with Seth and, and Finn Balor. And Seth does his promo about how Finn knows he has no chance. You have no chance here. You are going to lose at SummerSlam. And in fact, you're either going to lose or... If you win, your boy is going to cash in on you, and you're going to lose. So no matter what happens, you're going to lose. And Finn's all angry, but then he laughs and he signs. And he says, you think you have this figured out, but you don't. We run this place right now. I've been losing for seven years. It's been driving me insane. And he said some stuff I can't say here on the air because, you know, I don't swear. And then Seth tries to, uh, you know, jump him because the Judgment Day is surrounded the ring. He tries to get a jump on them, but he fails. And they absolutely destroy Seth Rollins. They hit him with all their finishes. And uh, Priest hits the edge. Dom hits the frog splash. Finn hits the foot stomp. They leave him for dead. They, they celebrate his show ends. And yes, Judgment Day is the hottest act outside of the bloodline on this whole show. And it was patently obvious watching this show here. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button. And you'll never miss a video again.